I guess we've had guys asking us about communication systems, uh, more particularly about long-range communication systems. We're going to talk about that in a two-part video series here. The first part is going to be dealing with uh, VHF and the overall idea of how, of how all this works. And then the second part is going to be talking most specifically about high frequencies. Hello, my name is Arthur. I'm the founder and CEO of Tackleberry Solutions. We teach wartime tactics to citizens for civil and home defense. And today, we're going to talk about communication systems. And guys, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not the expert in this area. That would be Kent Labarch. That's why he wrote the manuals for our company. And I believe he has his contact information in there, K6IN, as well as his, I think he even has his phone number and other stuff too. So if you really want to know something, call him. He's retired. He's got nothing better to do all day than be harassed by you guys. So harass him a little bit for me and tell him I sent you just so he'll flick me to bird or something. That'll be funny. Anyways, all right, today we're going to talk about a little bit about how it works and VHF. So for starters, let's understand how this all works because this is going to play a key role in what type of radio systems you end up actually purchasing. If you're like me, you ain't got the time to sit there and buy a bunch of them and them not work right and try to figure it all out and all that BS. You want a damn thing to work when you buy it, right? Okay. So, very first thing, you have something known as the D layer in the atmosphere. Frequencies such as very high frequency or VHF or ultra high frequency UHF will just cut right out through that layer. Day, night, don't matter. It's going to cut right through. That's why I can take this radio, a little cheap handheld, and I can talk to the International Space Station with it because it'll cut right through the D layer. However, my big old HF radio rig I got in there just like pushing 100 watts of power won't do it because the frequency it's communicating on is entirely too low and it just bounces like this, which is why it actually will talk further but on the Earth's surface because high frequency that between 1.5 megahertz and 30 megahertz will just simply hit the D layer and come right back down like this. Now you can do something called a nevising effect. All this other crap we'll get into when I get to high frequency in the other video. For right now we're just talking about how it works. Now, one other thing. Height equals distance of your broadcast. What equals clarity of your broadcast? Okay, let me give you an example. Right now, I've got an antenna beside me right here. It's 50 feet tall. My antenna for VHF is at about 45 feet altogether, 190 feet in elevation. I'm right around about 100 and I think it's 145 feet, give or take, right? All right. I have talked all the way to Leland and hit their repeater. They're at 45, elevation, at 40 feet of elevation with a 200 foot tower, so 240. 240. 245, right? And I talked to them, clear as a bell. How? Because I was using a Yaesu FT2980. That is an 80 watt, understand the legal limit's only 50 because it's ultra high for very high and or ultra high frequencies. Well, I was using 80 watts because that's what that radio produces. Love that radio, by the way, guys. It's tough as nails. I absolutely recommend it. Look at the reviews. You'll know whether the radio is worth a crap or not. But uh, I talked that distance on a Flex J antenna that we built here at Tackleberry Solutions up about 45 feet. Clears the bell. How? Because we were at the same height. That's how. Now, had he been lower or I been lower, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Give you another example. Repeater in Goldsboro is 30 minutes away from me. I can take this handheld radio, I can hit it if I do like this. I can barely hit it. I got to get the alignment just right. Nothing in between me and it is a real pain in the butt. Why? Because this antenna is a lot shorter. Now, how is it that old boy could understand what I was saying at that distance? Because I was pushing 80 freaking watts of power, that's why. If I'd had this antenna, also a Flex J by the way, Hooked onto this radio, he'd have heard it. I'd have broke their squelch 
But would he have been able to understand what I said? Probably not. Now, that being said, if I had to use Carrier Wave or Continuous Write, i.e. Morse code, or if I had to use the PSK system, which is basically Morse code on roids, I'd have still been able to talk that distance. And he'd have been able to understand it. I'd have been able to do it on this radio at only 8 watts of power versus 80 watts of power. Why? Because it takes more power to carry your vocal, vo your actual voice signal that distance than it does to simply go beep and carry that signal the same distance. That's why you got guys that are using like the electric crafts and they're talking all around the world via Morse code on like one watt of power. In fact, what you'll see when we get to high frequency is I'm using the PSK system and I'm talking like Southeast Wales and parts of Nevada and all over the freaking country, all over the world on 100 watts of power. That's why I don't, the legal limit for HF is 1500, but I'm only pushing 100. That's because I'm on battery power and I'm trying to conserve that and just, why the hell am I going to put a crap ton of money into that system, yada, yada, yada. Anyways, moving along. Now, that VHF typically is not going to broadcast as far on the ground. I have that exact same radio, the FT-2980 uh, in this truck right here. It's on a standard antenna on the top of my truck, but I can only talk 20 miles on it, whereas the radio in the barn here at 45 feet, I talk 90 miles. Now how is that? antenna height. They're both pushing the same power. It's just one is at about 13 feet in the air. The other one is at 45 feet in the air. Huge difference. Longer distance you can talk. Ergo, the higher the antenna, the further you can talk. The more powerful the radio, the clearer you are to the receiver. Provided they're right not, next, you know, not right next door to you because then you're just burning them up. All right. Now let's talk about actual antennas. So just a little cheap Bay of Fang came with a little rubber duck antenna, right? I th actually think it came with a cheaper antenna than this and I put the rubber duck on it. But uh, saw a little radio. I'm getting about five miles range out of this. This is perfect for local communications for around your house for fob tax is what we used to call it. So you know, if you got your guard, he's out there, you got your Roman guard, you got your guys and your TCPs, that's what you want. Now, why did I go with this radio over like a standard little, you know, cheapo Walmart radio? Well, there's two reasons I did that. The first one was because I can kind of encrypt these. No, not exactly encrypt them, but I can put in offsets and I can put in uh, tone in squelch system. So basically, uh, I can take that radio and I can make it where you can hear what I'm saying. You just, unless you have the code, you know what it is, but you could figure it out. It'd take you a while, though. You're not interfering with my communications. So even though you can hear me, I can't hear you, which means you're not going to interfere with my communications. The other reason is, A, this radio battery actually disconnects so I can try charging it while I've got another one in, and the guys are still using the same radio at the same location. But another good reason was if I got somebody who's further out, so like I said, it can travel five miles, but well, those other little handheld radios You'll be lucky if you get a mile out of those. Yeah, okay, it says 22 miles. That's not real. It's like a mile. That thing will talk five miles. It says it'll talk five miles, and it'll actually talk five miles because that's a professional-grade radio. And I can go out, and I can actually talk back from five miles out. So if I have a QRF force or a Roman guard or something, they can get a comm link up, no problems. Furthermore, these antennas are detachable. So I can just take this thing right off, and I put something else on it like this. A flex J. Like what I, I built this one here. This is one that we have for sale. I can take that radio, that antenna, run it up a tree, and now I can triple or double, double at the minimal. I have had guys tell me they triple the range of their radio. So they went from talking five miles to talking ten miles. When I tested it, I got twelve miles. Other guys have told me, no, I've talked twenty miles with this radio on your flex J all because they were able to change out the antennas. So that's pretty important. Plus, when this antenna gets broke, like the one on my other radio is all like totally bent and crap, I can just take it off and put another antenna on it. Hell, I can manufacture antennas for it. 
Hey, look at this guy. This is my actual hops radio. So I got hops frequencies in it that have different squelch tone ends and code ends and this. So you can't really interfere with it. But the other thing is this antenna is made by a Bree and it can be totally manipulated and broke. And I usually carry it like this. If I'm having problems keying out, I just pop the strap and now I have it's over my shoulder and I can talk a little bit better, right? But that antenna, I have, when I tested it, I got six miles out of it. The other antenna, this little rubber duck, I got five miles out of that. All about antenna height. I'm still pushing the same wattage power, eight watts, with both of those radios, but because the antenna is higher, I'm able to talk further. So for local communications, and this is a lot easier than that, you know, local comms, you're going to want a VHF setup. Maybe, maybe not with the orange, but hey, whatever. You can get the uh, UV5R really cheap. You can buy them in like a large group. You can get like 10 radios for like 250 bucks. Uh, they're, they're really not expensive and they're great. I have like two of them and they work fantastic. They work every bit as good as this. I think they only push five watts though. You're going to get about three to three and a half miles out of them. Do you really need anything more than that for fob tacks for garden right around your house? I mean, you got a huge spread maybe but I don't think so the other thing is you can put a delete kit in there and you can set it up and to your truck plug it right in your cigarette lighter and that's your truck and your radio your radio and your truck all right let me show you one other thing and I'll get behind the camera to do it that is my uh, my Yaesu right here this is the truck radio and this is the uh, I think it's the, yeah Let's see if you can see that here. FT2980. Like I said, it's like an 80 watt radio. This thing is magical. Absolutely magical. So that's the Goldsboro repeater right there. That it's apparently not. That's the one that's not working anymore. See, I busted it, no problems. That's 30 miles away. Clinton, 30 miles. That's telling me I just activated that repeater. Broken its squelch. That's Apex. They're like 90 miles away. There ain't no way in hell I'm going to hit it out of this truck. Um, another, that's a different freak. That's one that doesn't work. Kinston, 30 miles. Just broke its uh, repeater. So, you just got to get these things and play with them. And, yeah, they're freaking, uh, they're, they're nice to have, but they're, they're an absolute necessity for operations. All right, I want to tell you one other thing about this, and then we're going to wrap this video up, and then I'm going to do the HF. The, um, a lot of guys have been asking me about getting their ham license. I have mine, KO4CHO. I have mine. It does help you understand. All that crap I told you at the beginning, that's where I learned it. That's how I learned that and Kent. So, um, I mean, if I have a question, I call Kent, honestly. And in this department or, or solar systems or something like that. that that's what the man did for a living for 50 stinking years so I call him if I have a problem or if I have a question but I also learned it because I'm, I'm, I got my ham ticket and I'm a ham operator that being said guys I was using this radio long before I had my ham license how? well I looked up on repeater book We'll put a link to that here at the end of the video. And I got all of my local repeaters. Remember, remember, it's only going to talk five miles. So I got all the local repeaters that I might possibly could hit. I've also told you that I could bang the Goldsboro repeater from here with that radio. So it's actually broadcasting 30 miles. It's just that my voice won't carry that far because the antenna is too low and we're kind of low on power. But I digress. I took all the repeaters. And I kicked all those frequencies out. Then I took all their frequencies that were not repeater frequencies and I just listened to them. And when I heard nothing for over a week, on those, I just had it on scan and I'm just sitting there listening to it. And when I heard nothing, I chose about six different frequencies. I like VHF. I think it works better than UHF. But UHF works better in an urban environment as it cuts through walls better than VHF. I'm in a rural environment, so VHF works better for me, but if I was living in a city, UHF, and if I was closer to the ocean, 
UHF because one of the things I found is that water will carry UHF better than it will VHF. Exactly the opposite of each other. Now, after I kicked out all those frequencies and I found dead frequencies, you saw on the radio, first thing that popped up, main, right? That is a dead frequency for this area. Then I put in an offset for it, or excuse me, not an offset, I put a code in, a key in code for it, and that's my frequency that I'm using. I've been running it for like five years now. Never had anybody on it that I didn't tell them who the frequency was. So I've never had a problem, and I was operating it for two years, talking back and forth to the wife at the house, testing my ranges without a ham license. One last tidbit of information. Listening, the information you're going to gather from just listening on something like an HF rig is more important than what you're going to say on it. Finally, in a state of an emergency, the FCC has declared that in a state of an emergency, you can broadcast on any frequency for any reason so long as it, well, so long as it provides to life, limb, or, or property. So in essence, if SHTF has happened, guys, you're good to broadcast on whatever freak you want. Thank you guys very much for watching. Y'all have a great day.